Hello and welcome back to Edwards Vacuum Laboratory Talk. My name is Dan Rutherford and I'm a market sector manager for Scientific Vacuum and I've been with Edwards for about 24 years. Uh, Dave and Todd were not able to join me today. They've been out of the office for a while, uh, likely making the world safe for high vacuum again. So I'm just going to hold down a little conversation with you guys about something that we get a great deal of questions on or there's a lot of confusion on in the marketplace, and that's gas ballasting. So gas ballast is a concept that was invented back in 1935. Uh, it was originally brought up, uh, designed for oil-sealed pumps of the day, but it does have its place in dry pumping as well. Um, when pumping air or evacuating a chamber, it may not be as clean as you believe it to be. Uh, we have a lot of water vapor in the air, uh, and especially in high humidity places. But there's also water vapor on the walls of these chambers. But there's also a lot of applications that introduced uh, vapor, whether it's water or other condensable vapors, into our pumps, such as rotary evaporation, distillation, gel drying, or even freeze drying. So these are quite heavy laden water vapor applications. So what you get up happening is, is when you're pumping this, this water vapor, during the compression stage in the pump, the vapor is going to try to condense into the oil if it's not removed effectively. So what we do with gas ballast is gas ballast is going to increase this flow that we have at this point of the pump to help dilute this vapor that is in the, inside the pumping mechanism in an effort to prevent it from condensing inside the pump. Instead, we want to compress it and exhaust it out, the, out of the exhaust valve of the pump. Uh, so this allows us to have, if we use gas ballast properly, this allows us to pump a higher level of water vapor without risking the, the possibility of it getting into the pump oil or on the surfaces of the pump and contaminating it. So if possible, what we, let, we recommend at Edwards is that if you, have the, if you have the ability to run gas ballast all of the time that the vapors are being introduced into the pump, this will have an impact uh, then, then that's the best practice as possible because this is going to have an impact on ultimate pressure. But you have to remember that without gas ballast, you're also going to have an impact on the ultimate pressure of the pump because of the vapor pressure of the, the water vapor that's being processed here. Okay, so on rotary vane pumps, it's possible you might see a, a, a decade off your ultimate with, when when you're running gas ballast. Um, some of the dry pumps is not as bad. In fact, on the multi-stage roots pumps, the NXR pumps that we've launched, you don't see as great of an impact by running gas ballast full-time. So you need to understand this and determine, can you run gas ballast full-time, all right? So basically, and the reason I say that, by the way, that running without gas ballast is going to impact your ultimate is that you have to remember that Water vapor has a saturated vapor pressure of about 24 millibars at room temperature, about 20 degrees C. If the pump is contaminated with enough water vapor, that's going to be the lower, lowest pressure that the pump's going to be able to achieve until you remove that water vapor from the pump. So getting rid of that is very, very important. Allowing the water vapor to condense into the pump is going to make your recovery time to ultimate pressure much longer than if you would have kept the vapor, vapor pardon me, the, the water as a vapor phase all the way through the all the way through to the exhaust. Okay, so if you you know if you get the water vapor out through the exhaust before it condenses, you don't have to worry about cleaning up your oil or the surfaces of the pump because when you do that, you basically have to when it's condensed inside the oil, you have to re-evaporate this water vapor before it can be pumped out. So this takes more time; it takes more energy to do so. You also have to remember that allowing water, in an oil seal pump, allowing water vapor to condense in there is going to damage your oil. You're going to degrade the oil capabilities. It's not going to be as good as the lubricant. Again, you're going to have batter. Uh, you're going to have a batter. That's pretty bad English. You're going to have a worse ultimate from this. Okay, and and when we look at pumps, all vacuum pumps typically have a max maximum water vapor handling capability in the specifications somewhere. You look at our manuals, you look at our data sheets, and you'll see that there's, like on some RV pumps, it may be around 60 to 65 or 68 
grams per hour of water. With our NXDS scroll pumps, those pumps can handle anywhere from 120 to about 250 or 280 grams per hour. And our multi-stage rouge pumps, the new NXR pumps, can handle about 300 grams per hour. But all of those ratings are based on full gas ballast flow. So you have to be careful when you're specific when you're looking at the specs of a pump. And the reason the way that these specs are determined is we look at the, the gas ballast flow rate that we can achieve. We look at the running temperature of the pump. We look at the, and we look at the pressure which the exhaust valve will open at. Okay, so those those all go into determining these specs. So exceeding these specs, especially an oil pump, is going to cause your oil to become very milky in consistency and color. Okay, you can see some foaming in there. And if this is left unchecked, if this oil level is going to actually start to rise as you get more water vapor condensed into it. So you'll actually see that phenomenon happen. But at this point, it's actually gas balancing isn't going to help you much if you have that much contamination in the oil. So at this point, if you're looking at this level of contamination, I would recommend doing an oil change. Now, you have to remember when doing an oil change, you're still you're not going to get 100% of that oil out. And you're still going to have some oil on the surfaces of your pump uh, mechanics as well. So what I would do is do an oil change, do, put fresh oil in the pump, bring the pump up to normal operating temperature with, and have the gas ballast on full and run it that way for about 30 to 60 minutes to clean up this pump as much as possible. Sometimes some people get enough oil or pardon me, water in the oil that they end up doing a couple oil changes to get themselves back to having clean oil and being able to ret return to the ultimate that they need from their pump. Okay, So that's typically the driving factor is that you can't reach your ultimate anymore. So now pumps like our dry scroll pumps and our multi-stage roots pumps, while they don't have oil to contaminate, you're still going to, again, restrict the ultimate pressure of that pump because of the water vapor pressure that you have to, that, that's going to be your limitation there. But you also have to look at the, the possibility of, of corroding items inside your pump, especially like a multi-stage roots pump, which can have a cast rotor. So I have had people say before that they see a brown liquid coming out of the exhaust of the pump. So that would be the you're you're getting enough water ganging up in the last couple stages of the roots pump and, and causing corrosion on that on that rotor there. So again, healthy pump operation, you want to use gas ballast whenever possible. Okay. So remember that preventing the condensation is important to, to do that from the start. Let's keep this pump, let's keep this pump clean. Okay, so if your operations allow you to gas to run gas ballast continuously, you should do that. Okay, but what you also need to do, in addition to running continuously, is you need to allow time for this pump to warm up. You want to start the pump, give it whether it's blanked off or or you have by a valve or just deadheaded, uh, just warm up to start this pump up before you start running water vapor through it. Run it on full gas ballast. Okay, get this oil nice and clean, get your pump all warmed up, and this is going to help you run this your process your your process better without contaminating your oil. And then at the end of the process, again, I recommend that you, when you're all done pumping these vapors, I recommend that you run the pump again for another 30, 60 minutes on full gas ballast to clean up any oil, any condensed uh, condensation that you may have had in the pump during your process run. If you cannot run gas ballast during your process run, which happens quite often, okay, I still recommend you take these steps. Take the same steps as warm up the pump on full gas ballast for 30 to 60 minutes after it reaches normal operating temperature, and then at the end of it, run it again for 36 minutes on full gas ballast to clean it up as much as possible. Um, believe me, you will benefit from this. For oil pumps, one thing I want to point out here is uh, when you're running uh, gas ballast through the pump, and you'll and, and anybody who runs has an application that has a relatively high flow rate, you know that when you increase the flow rate through a gas through an oil pump, you are going to see more oil mist ejected from the pump. So you need to consider that. You need to keep an eye on your oil level in the pump to make sure you keep that in the proper operating range. The best practice to use here and the safest way to set this up 
if you're running gas ballast or even high flow rates, <clears throat> is that you use one of our our mist filters. We call them EMF 10s or EMF 20s, depending upon the size of pump you have. This mist filter, what it will do is it will capture the oil out of this mist that is ejected from your pump. It's going to basically it's going to, you'll see a, a pool of oil that's going to collect inside that mist filter. So it's capturing all that. So you're not pumping that stuff out into your lab space or into your house exhaust line. What you need to do from there is now that you capture this oil, you're going to want to have some form of oil return kit that you're going to now connect to your, between your gas ballast and your, uh, from your, your mist filter and your gas ballast point to return this oil back into the pump. Okay, so basically this will prevent you from losing all that oil that you're sending out. It returns it to the to the pump where again you don't have to worry about keeping such a close eye on your oil levels. Now we have a couple different oil return kits. We have a clean oil return kit which uh, basically if you have a fl high flow application with little or no water vapor or condensable vapors in it then they would use this clean return kit that would take the oil that's in the mist filter and just return it back to the pump. But then we have for those who are running gas ballast continuously or need to run gas ballast continuously, we have what we call the gas ballast oil return kit. What this kit is, is it is a kit that connects to your mist filter and then it's going to have a cylinder on there and this cylinder you can select the gas ballast flow rate. You can have it select to zero you can select the gas ballast one position or gas ballast two position, depending upon how much water vapor you, or condensables you're looking at uh, pumping here. So what this will do is this will allow you to run your pump can, all the time on that gas ballast setting, and then will safely return the oil to the back to the uh, or to the back to the pump, so you don't have to worry so much about the, the oil level. So I highly recommend you look into those two accessories: the mist filter and the, oil, the gas ballast oil return kit when you're running gas ballast or running high flow applications. Okay, that's just a bit of awareness here because I've, I've seen people that have run these kits and end up with all their oil. I had one that was a leak detector and they had a roughing pump in there and it was a very large volume that they were pumping out and uh, all of a sudden their system didn't work and the reason why is all the oil that was in their pump was now spit out uh, in, into their uh, into their cabinet that they had the mist filter built in, or the uh, leak detector built into, so pay pay close attention to it. Okay, so the key point to take away here is that gas ballast is your friend. Okay, it will extend the life of your pump. It'll minimize the amount of services that you'll have to perform, and the amount of downtime that you're going to have on your equipment. Okay, if you have any other further questions on gas ballast or other vacuum topics. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us by emailing us at info at edwardsvacuum.com. If you would like us to answer questions for you during our podcast or you would like to see other material covered on our podcast, you can even send us a message to podcast at edwardsvacuum.com. Until next time, this has been Dan Rutherford at Edwards Vacuum for the Edwards Vacuum Laboratory Podcast.